So welcome everybody. Uh, good to see you this morning for the Saturday sessions which have restarted. We've got a series of seven Saturday sessions coming up on the work that we're doing in all sorts of um, different areas. And we're going to start off by talking about ending fossil fuel extraction and we're going to hear uh, some stories uh, from Kate about some of the actions that she's been involved in. Uh, and then we're going to invite you to uh, think about what you've heard and uh, in breakout rooms to maybe if you've got an idea that you want to bounce off other people or you think that there might be something that you can do locally or uh, you've got a national idea, just a conversation that we can begin about how we carry on the actions in relation to fossil fuel extractors. So uh, Kate, it's all yours. Thank you so much, uh, Melanie. And uh, it's completely lovely to be with all of you this morning and to see lots of faces I don't know as well as faces I do. Um, that's always encouraging uh, to feel that there are more and more folks um, joining us. And um, for those of you who, who don't know me, I've been part of Christian Climate Action now for uh, two or three years. I'm not even quite sure. And um, doing various things, including actions, uh, which is at the end of the day what, what we're all about. And um, Melanie's asked me to, to lead this session this morning just to kind of give you some ideas and maybe a little bit of inspiration about uh, from, from some of the actions that we've already done. And um, just to say, I'm really just going to focus on two. Um, we've done a lot more actions than this within CCA, but I know that uh, quite a number of the others that we've been engaged with will be very well handled under future Saturday sessions that are going to be held as part of this series. So I'm really just going to be focusing on two actions that we did directly in relation to business and industry, which is, is slightly off piste for us, because one of the things that's important for us uh, in CCA is being clear about who we are and what our contribution is in the climate activist space and what our role um, as Christians is. So what I'm going to do, um, I've pulled together a little presentation, not to be formal, but because it's got nice pickies in it and everybody would rather look at pickies than, than look at me. And, and that's the question I'm going to start with is why was, was CCA involved in this? So bear with me because I've got about as much brain left as a mushroom this morning and um, technical stuff is not always what I'm best at, but hopefully this will work. Okay, Melanie, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see that? Fantastic. Right. Let's, um, it's now, I'll try and make this the proper thing. Okay. Right. So the two events that I want to talk about, the two actions I want to talk about are um, the Shell AGM that we uh, visited on the 22nd of May this year, and also the Energy Intelligence Forum. And I am going to provide a little bit of context for both of these in a moment, but let's just look broadly. Why did CCA feel that these were two events that it would be good for us to attend? Uh, and there are several reasons. The first is, as the context that I'm going to provide um, later will explain, these, these events were quite singular in their nature. They were strategically very important events. Um, secondly, we felt that they represented a very good opportunity for us to express our Christian imperative to promote social justice um, because of the nature of the work that Shell uh, do um, and also the character of the Energy Intelligence Forum. Um, it was also a great place for us to contribute prayer and witness. Um, and in fact, I think at both of those meetings, it proved to be really important that that prayerful witness was there. And lastly, fantastic opportunities for collaboration. And obviously, Christian climate action within the activist space is relatively small as a group. And so opportunities to work with other groups where we can extend the impact and reach of what we do is always good. So um, those were the kind of things that, that kind of highlighted to us that these, these were places that we should be. Um, I'm just going to have to. OK, so the context for the Shell AGM uh, was an interesting one. First of all, in 2021, Shell had relocated its headquarters to London. 
um, away from where it previously been based because it was having an increasingly strained relationship with the Dutch government. Surprise, surprise, because its uh, ecological um, credentials were far from desirable. Um, and there was um, a ruling by the Dutch government to the effect that Shell were not being sufficiently effective in reducing its carbon emissions. Um, so, so the relationship was deteriorating very quickly. So Shell decided it was a good time to move out. And so 2022 was the first time that they were going to be holding their AGM in London. And they really made a flagship event of it and they hired the Central Methodist Hall in Westminster, which those of you who know it uh, will appreciate is, a, is an enormous um, conference venue uh, as well as a Methodist Hall um, and uh, sort of very, very high pre prestige place to hold such an event uh, in London. So they were pushing the boat out. Uh, and that all of those things made it very significant that we should be there. Um, so who were the players, for the want of a better word, uh, in this event apart from, from us? Um, well, there was the Defund Climate Chaos uh, Coalition, who effectively sort of pulled a lot of this together, working with Extinction Rebellion, Friends of the Earth were there, Fuel Action Poverty, um, sorry, Fuel Poverty Action. Um, so a number of different groups were represented uh, at the event. So it was it was a terrifically collaborative one. So. In good old uh, CCA fashion, um, you know, we, we helped kick off the event with a prayer vigil. So before the event even started, the day before a 24 hour prayer vigil on site outside um, Westminster, uh, the, the Central Methodist Hall started uh, and that was running right up to the meeting itself uh, and, um, uh, you know, really underlines the significance and importance for us as CCA bringing prayer and underpinning everything that we do in action um, in prayer. We're very conscious that we're dealing with enormous forces, huge corporations, governments, you know, and we we can't do this without God's help. Um, and then once the action itself began, it was split into two parts. So first of all, there was outside. And the first thing that we did was that we made everybody who was going into uh, the this um, AGM, uh, all of them being shareholders of, of Shell and stakeholders in other ways, pass this banner. Um, where we declared that we had no faith in fossil fuels. So everybody was walking past that. Um, and at the same time, there were a number of other amazing and beautiful things going on. So there's XR where the Red Rebels have turned black to represent coal and oil and a very blunt statement of uh, the impact that Shell is having uh, on uh, our world. There were some beautiful wreaths and flowers around this empathy banner, which were there to represent so many people who have been impacted um, by Shell, uh, even to the point of losing their lives. Uh, we you know, think very much of um, the nine people who were hung uh, because of their resistance to what was um, going on in Nigeria uh, and so many others whose lives and habitats and livelihoods have been utterly wrecked. So that was a very poignant and very beautiful uh, reminder of them. Uh, and along with all, the, this, uh, all the visual effect, there were a lot of speeches and the lovely Caroline Lucas was one of the people who came along and spoke that day. So before the delegates had even got into the building, there'd been a really very strong presence and a very strong message uh, about what we thought about the activities of Shell. And so what also then went on was that about 70 protesters managed to get inside the meeting by reason of each of us buying um, uh, a share in Shell. Um, <laughs> a fact that to this day makes me feel disgustingly dirty. I'm, I'm now a share Shell, a Shell shareholder and, uh, and remain so. Um, but it was the only way we could get in. So we bought the minimum number of shares that we could, which was one, and snuck in to the building. And it was pretty terrifying um, because uh, once once we'd got in, which there was really no problem at all doing, 
um, there was there was about 20 minutes or so where we were all having to stand around um, drinking coffee and um, you know you could be approached by anybody uh, and I think it was the UK chairman of the shareholders came up and engaged us in conversation I immediately ran away and um, Val uh, King who I think is here very manfully uh, with her business experience coming to the fore engaged him in polite conversation where he made it pretty clear that another reason for Shell coming to the UK was that um, there was uh, there was less regulation here. Um, I see that uh, Kath has her hand up. Um, have you got a question, Kath, or is there a problem with volume? No, nope, it's gone down. Okay. Oh. No, I was just clapping. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Stop fiddling with the keyboard. So yeah, so so I, I decided that instead of talking to the UK chairman uh, shareholder uh, chairman, I was going to go away and exploit Shell by drinking as much of their coffee and eating as many of their Danish pastries as possible, uh, which I did um, with with great alacrity before we were all ushered into the enormous hall where the event um, took place. And essentially, what happened then was a very very carefully choreographed um, performance really. I mean the amount of work that had to go into this event was phenomenal and I give in absolute kudos and credit to everybody who's involved because it was quite awesome. So it started off with a choir and um, uh, the choir was singing we will block you instead of we will rock you so very kind of quite conf confrontational kind of song to start with and interrupting the CEO the minute he stood up to speak and to introduce the meeting. So as soon as the AGM kicked off, the disruption started. And following that song, there were then a series of people who stood up and read um, a narrative which outlined some of the ways in which Shell had impacted the world so negatively. And in order that each of those people might be heard, after each sentence, the rest of the protesters then repeated the sentence so that 70 people were repeating this. So it, it came across with absolute clarity to the, um, the board, who you'll see in another photograph in a minute, were all sitting at, at, at panels at the front in this enormous room. And then at the end of each of these statements, the protesters all together intoned in this rather ghoulish way, Shell must fall. <laughs> and you can see here that they also had uh, the Shell must fall banners. Um, and this just went on and on and on. You know, e each of the protesters had, had something to say. And by this means, we just continually blocked the meeting. Now, our own contribution to this within Christian Climate Action is that three of us, um, I'm there in the middle, we've got the lovely Val to my right and Caroline there is on my left, stood on chairs, uh, which turned out to be more precarious than we thought, uh, because the chairs actually folded and attempted to do so as we climbed on them, but we all survived and, and got up in one piece and, um, and held hands, which we later glued together uh, when the police arrived. And we sung a version of Amazing Grace, uh, which I will show you in a moment, um, which was adapted. And the security guards couldn't handle the situation at all. And they, largely because they were in a very difficult position. They couldn't throw people out because it was assault if they attempted to do that. Um, and they did attempt to persuade some people to leave, but they couldn't. And of course, we were on chairs, so they couldn't touch us. So very quickly, the police were came, called in and various policemen started to approach us um, to find out if we were glued together and to try and talk to us about health and safety and uh, to suggest to us that we might be um, guilty of aggravated trespass if we continued our activities. And our response to that was to ask each of them their names and pray for them which they found completely baffling um, and, and couldn't deal with at all. So a succession of about three or four policemen uh, came and went and were duly prayed for. Um, and we also prayed, you can see in that photo now, the board members who are at the front, um, we also prayed for each of the board members who were there. So again, prayer and witness was brought directly into that space. Um, 
we were hooted and jeered at inevitably uh, by the shareholders who were there. When we'd finished singing, one gentleman shouted out very clearly that we were three horrible women, uh, which I'm afraid made me giggle. Um, I'm sure we are. And um, at points, there was a danger of the meeting becoming quite confrontational. At which point Caroline had the inspired idea, uh, because by this stage, uh, as the longer things went on, we, you know, gradually we began to run out of material. So we, we were beginning to have to um, improvise. Caroline came up with the inspired idea that we started to talk about I dream of a world where and bring sort of the more positive um, vibe back into the meeting, which was very successful. And extraordinarily, um, we kept this up for an hour. This went on for an hour. So I'll just show you the verses of Amazing Grace that you can see here that we've adapted. And we chose this hymn because, as many of you will know, the person who wrote it, John Newton, was a slave trader who was converted and then abandoned his abusive, exploitative, colonial, colonialist practices and became an ardent abolitionist. And, and so the subtext to this song was, you know, that Shell itself also needed to abandon its exploitative colonialist practices. So as well as being a hymn that for many of us has a great deal of um, poignancy and um, association, uh, there was this very, very powerful message. And hey, we got a result after an hour. And the interesting thing was this group of people you can see at the front here, the board members, never once, apart from the chairman or the CEO who attempted to remonstrate with us and ask us to be quiet, they had listened to us and now please would we listen to them. There was no other reaction from them. This lot sat in front of us for an hour, completely stony faced. So uh, eventually the meeting is temporarily paused, turned into this meeting is going to be abandoned and gradually um, the hall uh, was cleared uh, both of shareholders and of protesters. But in fact, the shareholders all left first and it was left just with the protesters um, sitting in the hall facing the board. And eventually the board gave way and left. Uh, at which point we finished the protest and uh, left ourselves. There weren't, as far as I'm aware, any arrests within the hall. When we got outside, a couple of protesters then attempted to glue themselves to the building or the pavement, I can't remember which, and there were two or three arrests at that point. But essentially, um, from that point onwards, the protest wound down. The other results that came out of this, not just stopping the meeting, which in fairness did recommence in the afternoon. I mean, we were ne inevitably never going to be able to stop this thing forever. But we, you know, we really made our point. We got international media coverage for this. It went absolutely viral. And Shell share price dropped that morning. Now, that's what I call a result. So um, this was, it really was a very, very impactful um, I'd say one of the two most impactful um, actions I've ever been involved in and um, you know really ticked all the right boxes in terms of taking the message really to the people who were perpetrating the damage but as I say it was an enormously complex thing to put together um, and something that we could only do in collaboration with others. So that was the um, shell action um, and that was back in May. Then in October, um, we decided to, it would be nice to pay a visit to the um, Energy Intelligence Forum. Uh, now, in just give you a little bit of context to this one. This is a, a major gathering of, of oil executives and government, basically anybody who's a big player um, amongst the oil majors uh, and uh, or government um, in relation to energy provision uh, is there very high-end event. Now, this um, forum was originally established in 1951. I don't know if I've got the title of its, its name, original name, absolutely correct, but it was something to the effect of Oil and Money Forum, which tells you pretty much 
all you need to know about the nature of this meeting. And indeed, their aim, uh, if you look them up, is, is that they're accessing sources of data and information to help its members navigate today's obstacles and take advantages of tomorrow's opportunities, which I just read as a euphemism for how to make shed loads of money um, uh, and, and get around everything that we need to get around in order to do that. So we gave them a few more obstacles to get around uh, that particular morning. Now, unlike the shell action, we couldn't gain access to this one. Um, there was no easy way uh, of doing that. Um, so the players in this case, once again, Extinction Rebellion, both in terms of um, the uh, uh, Extinction Rebellion, Cambridge Youth were there, also Money Rebellion were there, Debt for Climate were there, and Fossil Free London were also represented at this event. I think XR scientists might also have been there. Is that right, Melanie? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So good. A good extinction rebellion uh, representation, uh, and and so on and so forth. So what we did, the event was held um, in the international inter intercontinental hotel um, in Mayfair, and the hotel sits on the front of a sort of a minorish road that comes off a, a really main road that runs through Mayfair. So it wasn't greatly blocking the public, but what we attempted to do was to block delegates who were arriving that morning from driving down the road. So as they, as they turned into the road, they were faced with us and our banner in prayer with this, um, this slogan, your greed is killing humanity. We did have to um, what's the word I want? Um, relocate a couple of times. We found that the position that we initially took up wasn't the most effective. And so we, we regrouped, um, but essentially we were there with the purpose of, of forcing them into walking because that would then take them down the road on a walk of shame as it was called. And and you can see here some of the delegates going in and you can see there's the XR scientists in their in their in their lab coats. And each of these people, as they're walking down towards the entrance, is holding a sign that's saying sub something uh, significant. Or in the case of this lady and others, there were quite a number of people holding up the stories of those who are in, being impacted negatively by uh, the activities of these oil companies. Um, I'll, oh, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, there was an attempt to get inside the building. As I said, we couldn't actually get into the meeting in the way that it had been possible to do with the Shell AGM because there were no shares to buy, we weren't members. Um, but a choir did attempt to get into the foyer of the hotel uh, and sing in the manner that had been done at the Shell AGM. And that, that just wasn't possible. They were booted out pretty quickly. So they stood in front of the entrance and sang and called out slogans from there. And this essentially went on for a couple of hours from about 7.30 through till nine, quarter past nine, while delegates were arriving. Now, unfortunately, there were other entrances into the hotel that we couldn't cover. And we also think quite a number of the delegates um, were already staying in the hotel. Nevertheless, there was a fair bit of traffic through there and we got some, some brilliant media coverage for this one again. So it was a much simpler action than the one in Shell. It required a lot less choreographing, um, but was as impactful in its way and certainly sent the message across again to the key players in the oil industry um, regarding what, what we required and what we, what we, what we need them to do. Results, as I say, less tangible than perhaps for Shell, but, but some really good coverage. And the, the reason I wanted to show you this photo is this is Martin Jarvis, uh, who's, who's uh, a regular CCA, -er, and he was holding up this banner, which he'd actually created in Pret-a-Manger in about 15 minutes um, that, that morning, um, having been given the materials and the quote by Melanie, this quote from um, Pope Francis. And what tickles me so much is that this is actually now an alarmy stock photo. I don't know those of you um, who do design will know exactly what I mean, but the, you know you can go on these sites where you can have all this stock footage. So if you're trying to design something and you need a picture of a dog or a 
house or a touristy looking place. Well, Martin has now become the poster boy on the alarmy stock photos for banner protest, <laughs> which is not, I think, quite the outcome we were looking for. Nevertheless, um, it, it was it was really good uh, to see him there. So I hope that gives you um, a little bit of um, insight into those actions, some ideas, some inspiration. Um, certainly, I mean, both of them were great actions to be involved with, and certainly the Shell action uh, was uh, was a, a terrific thing to have been a part of. And I hope that uh, that gives you all some thoughts. <laughs>